Welcome to America's Vote 2024. I'm Kevin Cirilli. House Republicans are going to mark up impeachment articles against Department of Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas later. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, a Republican from Georgia, was one of the main drivers of this process. In fact, she was the first member to move to attempt to force a vote on impeaching Mayorkas back in November. Joining us now to discuss the latest on the impeachment effort is Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Congresswoman, thank you for joining us. This would be the first time in about 150 years that a cabinet member is impeached. What's the latest? Well, Kevin, thank you so much for having me on this morning. I forced a floor vote in the House of Representatives back in November after two of my constituents were killed by a 17-year-old cartel member smuggling illegal aliens into Texas. Um, my articles of impeachment had been sitting in judiciary with no movement for Mayorkas. Impeachment is not something that we're celebrating today, but it's something that's necessary and it must be done. America has been overrun with illegal aliens. Over 10 million people have crossed our border, but there's nearly 2 million gotaways that we should all be concerned about, especially with the developments over in the Middle East. Today at 10 o'clock, Homeland Security Committee will meet. We will begin the markup on these articles of impeachment, and I expect that our committee will be voting a um, uh, uh, voting these articles of impeachment out of committee. And so when do you think it's going to come to the floor? That's the question that um, I'm going to be asking at the conference meeting this morning. I want to find out, you know, Speaker Johnson said as soon as possible that we will have a floor vote. Uh, but, you know, we have very narrow margins in the House with our very slim majority. So I, sometimes it's a matter of attendance that could affect that. Uh, but it also could be that maybe we have a few holdouts. What I've heard is that we have the numbers to pass it on the House floor, but I'll be asking those questions in conference this morning. So, so Congresswoman, even if the, the House impeaches, then it goes to the Senate, two-thirds needed in order to convict it, and that's unlikely. You know that. Uh, so your critics are, are, are going to say, why do this process if, if you know the outcome already in the Senate? Well, that would be only if you're looking at this impeachment as political, like the two impeachments of President Trump, which were absolutely political and both led to uh, not being convicted in the Senate. We have evidence and proof that Secretary Mayorkas has violated his oath of office. We also have evidence and proof that he has violated federal immigration laws. He's paroled millions of people in in mass into our country. Um, that, that is something that he did on his own. He never came to Congress and asked permission to change federal immigration law to be able to do that. We have many more examples, and we'll be going through them today uh, when we mark up our bill for impeachment. Um, so I think that if people were honest in the Senate, then yes, absolutely, we could have a conviction in the Senate. President Biden, meanwhile, he said that he would, in fact, shut down the border, an authority that he would use should the bipartisan negotiation uh, bill that the Senate has uh, agreed to with regards to immigration reaches his desk. You've said this is a non-starter. Former President Trump has said this is a non-starter. Why is it a non-starter? Why not uh, advance the bipartisan bill and then, in a Republican-controlled administration, try to get even more? Well, President Biden is talking about he'll only shut down the border after 5,000 every single day come across the border. That's the number in the border deal package coming out of the Senate. That's not a border deal. That's a border surrender to people wanting to invade our country. And that's why it's a non-starter. If President Biden wants to be serious about securing and shutting down the border, he can do that with a pen on his desk. And he did that. Um, he totally ripped our border wide open with his own executive orders when he became president on day one by by totally wiping out strong border security measures like remain in Mexico. And he brought back catch and release. It is such a dangerous time for our country. And this isn't a time to play partisan politics. This is a time for Americans to come together and realize that the Biden administration has created a national security disaster for our country. And Secretary, Secretary Mayorkas made it absolutely worse by violating federal immigration laws. I would love to work with Democrats. I would love to see bipartisanship happen if they actually cared about the United States of America. But they're more interested in the Senate and funding billions of dollars to Ukraine and throwing money all over the world for other people's borders but, instead of our own. But Congresswoman, you know, and, and I want to press you on this, because when you look at the Senate, there is a bipartisan deal. They did agree to a bipartisan deal. 
And so it is a bipartisan immigration proposal. And you say you want to work with Democrats. Former President Trump has said the same exact thing. But at the end of the day, here's the bipartisan deal. And my question to you is that particularly for moderate voters who want to see something happen, especially at the border, no one's debating that there's a crisis at the border. There's absolutely a crisis uh, at the border. But when there is a bipartisan deal that has been put forth, strategically, I'm, I'm curious, why are conservatives such as yourself saying it's, it's the everything or nothing as it relates to this? What strategic uh, imperative do you place on that? Is it because of presidential politics? No, Kevin, I challenge you to be serious in front of your viewers. 5,000 people a day, you call that a bipartisan deal? There's only a handful of Republican senators over there that are willing to be traitors to our country with the Democrats and allow 5,000 people to illegally invade our country before they think about shutting it down. That's not bipartisanship. That's America last, and it is absolutely dead on arrival. It will not happen in the House, and it's a joke. Anyone that would, would be willing to vote for that should be ashamed of themselves and they should resign because they're not serving the American people. They're not upholding our constitution and our laws. They're handing over our border to the cartels and saying, sure, 5,000 people can come in every single day. That's $1.8 million. I mean, I'm sorry, 1.8 million people a year, Kevin. That's not a bipartisan deal. That's a sellout to the cartels and to illegal aliens. And people need to get more serious about our country. The American people are serious about it, and that's why it's the number one issue all over the country, number one issue in the Republican primary right now. And that's why President Trump is destroying every single presidential candidate that's running against him, because wanna, he had four years of Trump. I want to follow up with Speaker Johnson. We you need said that it, back, Kevin. You, you said it would be dead on arrival. Speaker Johnson released a Dear Colleague letter. He said that if the bipartisan bill came to the House, it would be dead on arrival. Do you trust that Speaker Johnson will, in fact, uh, not advance this uh, bipartisan deal? And if he does, would you file a motion to vacate? I absolutely do believe Speaker Johnson when he says the border surrender joke of a deal coming out of the Senate is dead on arrival. It's not happening. So, so you, is there still trust, I guess what I'm asking, between yourself and Speaker Johnson? He says it's not happening. He's made that statement over and over yeah. publicly. I think he's making that for the American people. And I don't think he's going to go back on that promise. Um, right. That certainly is a, re is a red line for me. You know, I remember interviewing you uh, back in uh, North Carolina during uh, when you were attending a, a Trump rally. And, and we spoke then about uh, the prospects of a vice presidential pick. Do you, do you, have you spoken directly to former President Trump about being on his VEEP list, uh, on his short list? Was, is that an opportunity that you would like? Uh, and then you hear rumblings. It was in the press yesterday that uh, the Trump campaign has kept the door open to RFK, even Nikki Haley. As Trump decides on who his running mate should be, what is your analysis and would you want that job? Well, thank you for asking. I talk with President Trump frequently every single week and his, uh, his desire to pick a vice presidential candidate to run with him is not something that he's prioritizing right now. Also, the Trump campaign has also released multiple statements saying it is absolutely not true about RFK being um, called and reached out to to be considered for vice president. So I know it's a fun thing to talk about in the news, but this is not an issue that President Trump is considering right now. Um, it is a, it is something that he will take very seriously and make that decision on his own. And I will help President Trump in any capacity that he asks me. And I look forward uh, to him winning and, and I look forward to him being back in the White House. What about the Congresswoman Boebert race? Are you going to get involved in that primary? Uh, that's not something I'm looking at. I, I think she's got to earn those people's support. I saw that she came in fifth place in the straw poll over the weekend, which she should be very concerned about. Um, I think that's a serious primary, and it seems like there's some good candidates in there. Uh, we'll see what's happening with the polling and the direction it's going in, um, but that's not something I've decided to do at this time. The Chiefs are the 49ers. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm really impartial. I am more of a college Come on. Football fan. What a political yeah, I'm answer. I'm a Georgia Bulldog. I'm a Georgia Bulldog at heart. I definitely watch the games um, and I look forward to the Super What do you think of the Taylor Swift Travis Kelsey? Uh, <laughs> you want to know something? I I'm really not into that whole debate and that whole thing. Um, I so I could really care less about Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. I, I just I just watch football when I'm watching it. So. Do you think the Super Bowl's rigged? Last question. 
<laughs> I certainly hope not. Um, that would be that would be something terrible. Uh, you know, right. I couldn't again. get an answer. Chiefs are 49ers. <laughs> Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, appreciate you letting me, uh, you know, ask you those tough questions and uh, and to, to understand about that bipartisan agreement. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene, again, on that impeachment proceeding in the articles with regards to uh, uh, Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas. Again, she was the first to file that back in November. I'm Kevin Cirilli. Thank you for watching America's Vote 2024.